right guys welcome back to the ALGS channel hope you guys are all doing well and having a great day so far I am finally feeling better things are good the news is good we got a lot of stuff to discuss in today's video finally things seem to be on the upward trajectory if you guys want to step today all things Apex Legends esports related including talking about the support that EA is finally giving to some of these organizations in today's video going into ALGS year four and roster changes and news about comp changes coming pretty soon in a new update then make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel without further ado let's go ahead and dive right into this first thing i want to make mention of yes you saw the title correct this is the big news that i've been like a couple months ago i put out this tweet that like i heard some really good big news it's going to be super exciting and this is basically what it was now of course shortly after we all knew that this was coming anyways we heard a lot of rumors and we've also heard that this actually already existed to some extent but new teams have been added to it more support seems to have been added to it and ea has apparently just theoretically just stepped up their support for algs teams into year four so breaking yes ea supporting these teams and now you can see all the teams that are here now we're going to go into a list on apexglobalseries.com we put together a little article about a lot of the press release events that were out there and regarding which teams would be uh getting this support and what the support actually looks like uh apex legends esports themselves put out that they're excited to announce it is a 12 team partnership for the algs year four now there's actually uh another organization in here that was supposed to be in here but uh i guess we'll talk a little bit more about that later so the benefits according to esports.gg is supposed to be financial support activation opportunities at algs events like i guess like team booths and stuff community related benefits which i think is pretty much like licensed to host official tournaments and stuff you know how like basically call of duty does like their uh you know major one is like optic gaming's major right it's like optic texas like they do their own team has their own event right and the major two could be the new york uh, subliners major it would be really cool if like throughout the algs season we have a tsm major or you know we have a a, a furia major let all of these organizations host their own tournament or something like that that it's like a big prize pool or something that would be really cool and i think it would get a lot more uh you know i guess eyes on these teams as well the official 12 teams that you guys can see going into this that have this support are as follows alliance no surprise dark zero no surprise disguised is a very big surprise phase fanatic furia lg shivas uh, uh and the moist esports optic gaming riddle tsm and exit none of those are really a surprise besides disguise now dsg obviously did play algs champs i'm not trying to discredit them in any fashion however they only signed them for a very short period of time shortly after champs was over they were dropped from the roster or basically parted ways i'm pretty sure it was like a very temporary deal uh moving forward and now all of a sudden dsg has not really been committed to this algs scene but yet they get this I feel like it is slightly unfair, especially to the, some of the organizations out there that have been putting a lot of time and effort into this scene as well for a little bit longer. But I mean, it is what it is. I guess EA has the right to do what they want to at the end of the day. But like I said, these uh, this is a pretty good you know announcement that we've been asking for for quite some time for more support, more uh, help for these teams. And a lot of these teams are leaving the esports organizations and, and leaving the, the esports scene in general for Apex. And we've seen Liquid go and NRG go and SSG go and, and Cloud9 go and G2 go. What would keep these guys around? And EA has apparently noticed that and realized they want to do something different. So that's where the support comes in. It is a big W all around, but I can't help but wonder why in the world the disguise get here? Where's like oxygen? You know, I think oxygen was supposed to be here. A couple other teams probably could have been here. What in the world is going on? Now, it's good to see that FaZe Clan has decided to uh, basically stick around and uh, we were really hoping that they would. We heard they might actually be leaving the scene. And thankfully, when this partnership came through, I think it kind of solidified them to stay back in the scene. 100 Thieves, however, we did hear that they actually might be, and it looks like leaving the ALGS scene, unfortunately. And of course, when you don't see them here in the partners, it kind of makes it sound like they are indeed going to not be there either. Now, what was really weird though, a lot of people were asking me, how in the world did DSG get this? At the end of the day, sloppy toppy with a twist goes a really long way. I don't know whose toes had to get sucked for this, but it's really crazy to see that these guys uh, were able to get in over some of these other prominent organizations. It's also good to see some other, uh, you know, representation like Riddle Esports and Alliance from not just North America, Fnatic. You know, not all of these are North American teams, but sadly, most of them are. But I guess that's just because of how, you know, dedicated and how much value they bring to AL 
lgs as well so really big announcement there and very glad to see also wanted to mention some roster changes going on you heard xset is one of those teams that is going to be getting this financial support sykes is no longer going to be on that roster now of course we did know this we heard this and there was actually even a clip that is not in this video of koifel basically saying who he thinks the top igls in the game are and he said if i don't include my teammates it you know it's how it's vain it's this guy it's that guy whatever if i do include my teammates then i would say nocturnal so of course it made it seem like xset is his team then of course we also see they're consistently playing with Koifel uh, inside of the scrims. Again, Sykes finally let us know uh, what's going on with the whole Exet roster for him and basically how he is no longer a part of this team any longer. So it did not come by way of getting dropped, he said. I did not get dropped from Exet and I am not even looking for a team. So it seemed like this was a little bit of like, you know, okay, what, what is this mystic tweet? Are you retiring? Did you voluntarily leave or what's going on? So Nocturnal basically, it seemed like there was a little bit of tension here because Nocturnal felt the need to come like do a little correct, corrective statement, you know, saying like, oh, he actually already left and he already has a new team. And so that's what's going on. And then you see like, you know, you, you kind of sense the tension because like you see drop saying, oh, this is the community notes of Apex. That's what made, made, it, made it seem like it was a little bit of a correction statement. Then you see Sykes basically come out to clarify what's exactly going on. I absolutely love fun and knock. And yes, I could have handled things better, but I did what I think is best for me. I had an absolutely amazing year with those guys, especially place top four in everything we played for a year straight and learn so much from them onto a new chapter and cannot wait to prove everyone wrong again. So there goes Sykes in his new announcement. Basically, he's not gonna be teaming with Xset anymore. And I would imagine maybe Dark Zero, he's been scrimming a lot with Dark Zero lately, but he they haven't really had like crazy, crazy success. Dark Zero played last night with, I think, Funk, and I think they did pretty good with Funk as well. So who really knows? I mean, I, I can confirm I did a little bit of digging before this. He definitely doesn't seem to be going to the Sweet Dreams roster because Big Bandit that Sweet has been constantly playing with and doing pretty good with, this Big Bandit guy has been playing at the same time that Sykes was playing with Dark Zero. So couldn't be him. Hardy tried to, I figured that's probably what it was, but it turns out it not. So I, I'm thinking Big Bandit for Sweet Dreams has got to be like Zane or it can't be Zainu either because I looked at Zainu and Zainu was playing as well. So I, I imagine it's got to be Zane or something. I don't really know at this point. But there's your roster update moving forward for Sykes. Lastly, just a couple of things I wanted to mention. Apex did a little bit of a Reddit AMA to answer some questions about like comp meta. And I want to give you guys a little bit of an update as to where their mind is for some of these things that they're changing in competitive Apex. So number one, I'm going to like run through these really quick. I'm not going to read the full thing. Someone asked about like legacy POIs. Why do old POIs suck in comparison of loot compared to like the new POIs? Why don't you make like all the POIs like actually pretty good in loot? And basically said that the heart of Apex is variety. Uh, and basically uh, POIs in terms of loot, they don't always want it to be identically the same. They want some POIs to basically not be all, all identical. They want some POIs to be weaker than others. But at the same time, they don't really want uh you know they are going to make some improvements they did say they said they're trying to improve the loot on some of these other pois that don't have as good of loot but they don't want to necessarily just buff it all to where everybody you know doesn't really need to contest for anything anymore because it's just all free grabs and all good loot everywhere also someone said uh as far as the meta goes we've been seeing a cat bang horizon meta for so long and then someone had also said do you guys have like a, a generic time space as to when you like certain legends to be in meta so like for instance like is it like oh cat's been in meta for a year it's time to take her out basically they say they have no specific uh time on how long a, a legend should be in meta but they do gauge it based upon what they feel like is most healthy so for instance they said they left gibby in the meta for longer than normal because they felt like he was healthier than the caustic meta so if you see something that's a little bit healthier you might see it around a little bit longer so if they feel like that the bangalore meta is not healthy they might take bangalore out pretty soon so we'll see obviously if they make any changes pretty soon and of course we do know pro league is coming up in january tomorrow we will be able to say that it's next month i think i said that wrong yesterday and so uh that's gonna be good news because uh, obviously meta changes normally equiv equivocate equivalent i don't know uh, equal new teams basically on the horizon and last time we saw a meta change tsm struggled really bad off the launch but they were able to take it back uh, after a really weak pro league performance to start they turned it around qualified for land did really good at land and continuously did well throughout the season as well so we'll see which teams adjust pretty fast also wanted to mention just so we wrap it up the last one uh, they are also basically looking at changing the drop ship speed so if you notice a lot of maps sometimes it feels good sometimes it doesn't i think that storm point is one of those maps where it feels weird because of the high elevation but basically like 
some teams can drop soon they can loot quick they can rotate quick and for the ship going really slow teams that have to stay inside the ship for a very long time might get punished on the rotate because of it they said they're looking into that and they're testing some new timings on the ship and how fast it goes on certain maps as well so you might see a little bit of a change pretty soon there also they did make mention that they are actively getting more feedback on pros scrimming on these other maps so that they can make updates to these maps to make them more competitively viable so it might not just be an olympus edition in the next year or two you might see actually broken moon or maybe king's canyon make it back into the competitive rotation as well but it sounds like what they're trying to do is basically get feedback on all these maps and go back and fix all these maps so that they can all be competitively viable once again we'll see let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below of course like the video subscribe to the channel if you want to save the day all things apex legends esports related and until the next time we will see you all later gators